Hi, this is David Farrell with another computer music video. The topic of this video is controlling parameters in Ableton using Max for Live. This is actually a pretty simple thing to do, but I think the setup is fiddly enough and I've had to explain it to enough students that I wanted to make a video about it just to share with uh, other folks in case it's useful. Um, this video presumes a little bit of knowledge on how Max MSP works. And so if you don't know that, you might want to check out another video just to get the basics of objects and inlets and outlets and everything else that's going on. But I'm going to jump forward um, and talk about what we're going to do today. So when I say controlling parameters, what do I mean? Well, a parameter is basically anything in your Ableton live screen. There's knobs all over the place. Um, all of these different objects have so many settings. Parameters like the volume of a track or like a clip in um, inside of a track. All of these are things that we can mess around with. And yeah, we can control them with their mouse, but mousing around the screen is really annoying. We can create envelopes that allow us to modulate parameters along predictable lines, but sometimes that's not the most useful thing. And uh, sometimes we just want Max to do the heavy lifting for us. And so um, given that, I wanted to make this video so that it can show us some of those basics of things here. So let's get started. The primary object that we're going to be using is indeed called Live dot object live dot object capital t my caps lock is on live dot object is um a really useful thing in terms of just sending information to different places in Ableton. That's really what it's for. But by itself, it doesn't do that much. It needs some friends. So I'm going to show you the real basic setup here. Live.object comes with a, a friend called live.path. And uh, the left outlet of path sends an ID number out. This ID is what object needs. The ID number is basically the address, so to speak, in Ableton Live of where we want to send things. So live.path can send that address, but for this, we need to send live.path the right path in which to send uh, to send that address. So um, Ableton has made this really easy to use in their most recent versions, which is awesome. So I am going to go to the dry wet control of my reverb unit here, and I'm going to right click it. And near the bottom, you can see this thing that says copy max for live path. That's exactly what we need. I'm going to right click that, or I'm just going to click on that and uh, I'll create a message object by pressing M and paste it in. And you can see it gives me this beautiful language. Live underscore set space tracks zero devices three parameters 32. Um, that might seem like a lot of nonsense to you, but to Max MSP, that's exactly the kind of information it wants to know so that it can figure out where to send information. Live underscore set is talking about our current set. Track zero, well, computers love to start counting at zero, and so this is track zero. Devices, this is device zero, our Max patch. Device one is the instrument. Device two is this Redux, and device three is this reverb unit. And parameters 32, well, I don't know how it counts, but dry wet ended up being number 32. To send this into live.path, it, it wants the word path at the beginning, so I do need to type that in. Once I connect this message object, I can send it, and you can see it's calling that ID6. Uh, a little hint, if it ever says ID0, there's been a mistake here. We'll note that live.object needs this information before it's going to work. And for that to happen, you need to click the message object to send it to live.path. If you're like me, you're a lazy programmer. And so whenever I make these things, and I make them with some regularity, I end up putting load bang at the top. To remind you, load bang sends a bang when you open your max set. And so that means if I were to save this uh, max patch, as soon as I opened the software, it would send a bang into this message, which would send that message to path, which would send the ID to object, which is exactly what I want it to do. So that's just a nice little time saving hack for you. So now that live.object knows where we want to send information, we want to send it to the dry wet knob, we need to send the actual information into the left inlet. And you can see it's got a number of different things um, that were that uh, another number of different commands that it listens to. The one that we really like is called set value. And so I'm going to use the prepend object. Prepend just means any message that you send into the inlet is going to be uh, have the word set value before that message. And this is really useful because this is how we live.object likes to be talked to. So if I send a number into here, what will actually happen is it'll send out the words prepend set value followed by that number. And whoa, you can see that it's working as I move this float box number. 
we can see that dry wet is moving up and down. The numbers that you send in to a live dot object depend on what setting you're trying to modulate. Different settings in Ableton Live might want different numbers. Zero point to one point is a really common thing, a floating number, a decimal point between zero and one is one of the most common things I've found in Ableton Live. Zero to 127 for MIDI things can also be useful, and some other settings want even a different range of numbers. For me, this is a place for trial and error, quite honestly. So now that we've got this working, we can see how it sounds. Here's no reverb. And as I drag the number up, more and more reverb until we get exclusively reverberant sound. You can see that my console has now got a red number. It's saying, hey, invalid value. That's right. Whenever I send something below zero or above one, um, Max gets a little annoyed. Ableton gets a little annoyed because those are not values that are recognized by the reverb setting. Um, it's not breaking anything, but it's also not doing anything. A common way that I might set up this interface is um, to use a slider. The default output for a slider, of course, is 0 to 127, like any good MIDI, um, any good MIDI device. And so I often use the scale object here to help me out. Scale translates one value of one range of numbers into a different range of numbers. And so what I've just done is create a scale that says, hey, look for numbers between 0 and 127 and send out values between zero point and one point. And you can see I'm just mousing along and moving the reverb settings on this. Isn't that convenient? So that is the basic setup for controlling parameters in Ableton using Max for Live. You need a live.object on the bottom. You need a live.path feeding into the right inlet. And above that, you'll need some kind of message telling it where to send the information. You can get that by right-clicking the device that you need and uh, just asking Ableton to copy that Max for Live path for you. Be sure you add the word path before, otherwise it won't work. And if you want to be smart and efficient, add a load bang before that. Once live.object knows where it's sending information, you'll probably want to prepend set value over here. Set value is the common language that live.object wants to know. And um, above that, you can send your numbers and use any of Max's number generating objects, of which there are so, 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 so many, to um, to effectively change the values here. Let's try one other thing here that we might wanna do, which is firing clips. I'm gonna copy my live.path and live.object, and I'm gonna to go to my clip here in the very first clip, clip slot, and I'll copy the Max for Live path for that. Clips also have an address as well. You can see live underscore set tracks zero, clip slots, clip slots zero, clip, and that is where this wants to be. And so um, I'll set this up just like I did before. And I'll grab my message box here to make sure that it's working. And indeed, hey, that's ID4. It wants to, that's where things want to be. Um, clips don't really need the prepend set value. We're not setting a value in the clip. I just want to tell the clip to play or not. The term that we like to do for this is call and call fire is the term that uh, Ableton likes to hear to start a clip. And so if I call fire, there it goes. My clip has been fired. And call stop will be the one that tells it to turn off. Even simpler, if you want to tell clips to go using uh, Max for Live, that's a really simple thing to do. Calling stop, calling fire like that. So those are some of the really basic ways that we can get things set up. Um, I want to model to, to wrap this video up. One way I might actually use this in a piece, right? I mean, creating controls like this honestly is something I would use in a piece, but um, let's just maybe see if we can't do something automated with Max for Live that would be harder to do in actual Ableton. And that might include something um, a little bit more complicated. I'll go to my Redux object here. And let's see if I can't get that set up for us. 
here is my Redux. I don't know what number of values it's going to want because it, it has a very wide range. Let's see what it's looking for. Yeah, it's still zero to one, just like everybody else. And you can see it sliding around. Okay, so I've got that working out for us and we can hear what that sounds like. Ooh, yeah, there we go. So this is a... Redux is one of my favorite little objects here. Um, it does some cool things. And what I'd like to have happen here is um, for it to sort of modulate what's going on in terms of uh, the settings without me having to do all the work. And so I'm going to change my scale values here just so I can get some of the more useful ones. The really high values actually don't do very much. What if I want 0.45 to 0.55? Okay, that's pretty fun. I like those sounds. And so what I'm gonna do here is um, use some of my favorite objects to work together here. And I'll ask it to be quiet while I work. Call stop, please. So I'm gonna use random 128 here. This is gonna generate a random number between zero and 127. That's 128 values. And I'm gonna use Metro, which is a metronome. It'll send out a bang every three seconds. Given this, I'll create a toggle to turn it on. I wanna send those random numbers into a line object. Line will help my numbers move smoothly from one to another. And I'll send those into my scale object here. Um, I also need a timing for this line. And so I'll tell it to spend, to send, to spend a, uh, 2,500 seconds, and I'll actually use a trigger for that. Oops. Trigger is a great object here. I want to trigger integer and 2,500. So what trigger is gonna do is anytime it gets one of these random numbers, it's gonna send two things out. First, it's gonna send out the number 2,500, which will go right here into my ramp time of line. Then it's gonna send out the integer right here, which will uh, smoothly move us from one to the next. So we'll send those into the scale object here and see how it goes. And now you can see the knob is sort of spinning randomly for us. We can fire. So the knob here is getting spun randomly. We don't really know what output is gonna happen here. This is something that Ableton Live would have a hard time doing. Ableton doesn't really love generating random numbers. And I can make it more direct or more reverberant. That's a fun sound, huh? So that is it for us today. In this video, we talked about controlling parameters in Ableton using Max for Live. We modeled a really strong set of objects here. Load bang leading into this message that has path followed by your live set address. And you can get that simply by right clicking on a parameter in Ableton Live. That'll feed into live.path, which will feed into live.object. On the left inlet of live.object, we just need to send numbers. And for that, we'll use prepend set value. From above prepend set value, all we need to do is send whatever number values we want into the object here. And so oftentimes that's some range between zero and one, but we can make it whatever we want. Sometimes we want a smaller range and some objects will want a bigger range. We can control those manually if we want to use some UI objects like slider. Or we can set something up like a metronome that can constantly be shifting things around. And if we don't want to send values, if we want to work with clips, well, we can do that too. They have their own vocabulary. Call fire and call stop are the most simple commands we can send clips. This is just scratching the surface. There's a lot of ways that Max can talk to Ableton Live, but I like starting here. These are some of the most useful ones, and I hope you can find some creative ways to use these tools. Thanks a lot for hanging out. Have a great day.